We're going to switch into health this morning. Dr. Ross Williams is back with us today to focus on functional medicine. This is also known as integrative medicine. You could say that it's a more natural way to become healthy again. Dr. Ross, thank you for being back on the show and joining me today. My pleasure. Nice to see you. Let's start by having you tell our viewers and myself mm -hmm. what exactly functional medicine is all about. Functional medicine is a new approach that's becoming more and more, more popular of putting the patient at the center of care instead of the diagnosis or the symptoms. Um, today's healthcare system is based on a very, very successful acute care model, which if something happens and needs immediate attention, uh, our healthcare system is, is excellent at taking care of those problems. But for the chronic conditions, which is what is, seems to be the big problems that are taking over the problems in healthcare in America, um, the acute care model doesn't really offer what gets at the underlying problems. So the functional medicine is, is an attempt to get at the cause of people's problems and not just treat the symptoms. Okay. Who would you suggest getting functional medicine done to? What patients need it the most? Obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancer, uh, okay. digestion, mm -hmm. allergies, you name it. Okay. How would you say functional medicine differs from conventional medicine? Well, functional medicine differs in that it puts the patient at the center of the care in the sense that in regular medicine, they find a diagnosis and then apply a treatment to a diagnosis, or they find a symptom, a set of symptoms, and apply a treatment to a symptom. Whereas in functional medicine, the doctor tries to find out everything they can about that patient. They look deep into their background history, into their genetics, into their lifestyle choices, and that sort of thing, looking for the underlying cause of the patient's problems, not just what are the symptoms and how to suppress the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now, is this the type of medicine that you prefer doing, Dr. Ross? Absolutely, yeah. In fact, it's the only type of medicine I do okay. and, you know, as a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. so. What tools does functional medicine use? Well, a functional medicine doctor uses pretty much the same armamentarium of tools that a regular doctor would use, but with different emphasis. For instance, uh, the case history, when you sit down with a patient and talk to them. Um, I might spend an hour with a patient the first visit as opposed to five minutes you know, in a doctor's office. Um, trying to get at all those details about the person's life and what kinds of problems they've had in their lives, stresses, exposures. Um, then regular blood work, urinalysis, and then there's some specialty functional labs where we might look at stool or at urine or at hair. Um, there's a wide variety of functional tests that can be employed. So functional medicine is very science-based. Um, it's not wooby shooby at all, uh, but the tools are, are about the same. They're just applied and a little bit different. Now, what would some argue is the negative side to functional medicine? Wow, there's a good question. Is there a negative uh, side in, in your opinion? I can't think of one. Um, so you just think yeah, that this is, it, it's a positive, it's a, a positive, positive approach. Thing, and it's, it's uh, looking more at underlying causes rather than just treating symptoms. It tends to downplay drug therapies and uses more natural therapies. Like, for instance, if someone comes to me with obesity and uh, borderline type 2 diabetes, I'm not going to put them on metformin as my first line of defense, which is a drug that causes the pancreas to secrete um, more insulin. I'm going to work with their diet, I'm going to get them exercising, and I'm going to do a wide variety of things, giving them nutrients that support blood sugar regulation. And many times with type 2 diabetes, you, it, it just goes away if mm -hmm. you do those things and you don't have to resort to drugs. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it, it's, it's quite a bit safer. Uh, How fast can you see results, Dr. Ross? Uh, in weeks. Mm -hmm. Generally, yeah. So they just need to keep coming back for appointments, though, to check with you, and then after a few weeks, they could be done. Well, not not usually. Generally, it, it works more like they'll come in for a, a pretty detailed plan, and then they might come back fairly soon for a follow-up so we can put that plan in action. Mm -hmm. And then they come in, in less frequently as they apply the lifestyle changes and mm -hmm. take the supplements and change the way they're eating, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that type of change, I mean, true healing takes time. Mm -hmm. 
we're not just trying to suppress a symptom until it pops up right. you know, five or ten years later as, as something worse. Mm -hmm. um, you want real lifestyle changes Real well. changes, yeah, real health. Dr. Ross, yeah. before we wrap up today, do you have a health tip for our viewers? Yeah, I was thinking about that today. I think because we're in the cold and flu season, um, there's a health tip for keeping colds and flu at bay that most people don't seem to know about, and it's good old calcium. Uh, everybody knows about calcium for strong bones and for other things, but calcium is a very important immune system signaler. What that means is that it, it's used, the body somehow uses it to, to tell the white blood cells where the little bacteria and things are that need to be killed so your white blood cells can go and find them. So if you start getting the sniffles or that little scratch in the back of your throat, take a bunch of calcium that day or before you go to bed that night and see if it doesn't, doesn't help. Oh, that is a great tip because yeah. this flu epidemic is going around. It's going it? around. <laughs> and another thing you could add to that is some golden seal or echinacea, and that stimulates your white blood cells to be more active. How much calcium a day do you say we need? Uh, on a, a normal day, you need about 1,500 milligrams, average person, but um, when I'm starting to get sick, I might take that in the morning, I take it two or three hours later, I might take that amount later, in, you know, four or five times that day, so mm -hmm. I might take you know, eight to 10,000 milligrams in okay. just that day, and I wake up the next morning and I'm not sick. <laughs> okay, so there it is, everybody. Yeah. If you are experiencing any flu symptoms right now, definitely take your calcium immediately. Dr. Ross, thank you again for being back on My the show pleasure. with me. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.